Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday of the year. My dear sisters and brothers, this Mass is offered as a Thanksgiving Mass offered by Mother Mary and family, Thanksgiving Mass offered by Priya, Susaraj and family, Thanksgiving Mass on the 40th birthday of Prakash Dishosa offered by family members, Thanksgiving Mass on the birthdays of Randall and Ryan offered by Roberts and family, Thanksgiving Mass offered by Alphonse and Cynthia family, Thanksgiving Mass offered by Bijo and family, Thanksgiving Mass offered by De Souza and family. For the special intention offered by Christopher and Loretta. For the special intention offered by Cecil. For the repose of the souls of Siri Matthew and TK Babu offered by Lissy Babu and family. For the repose of the souls of Juliet and Arthur Jerome Narona offered by Olive Viego and family. For the repose of the soul of Devasya offered by Tarun and Anupama. For the repose of the soul of Philomena Pereira, offered by Nisha and Brandon. For the repose of the soul of Vijay Christie, offered by Christie family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, book of prophet Baruch, chapter 4, verse 21 would say, Take courage, my children, and cry to God, and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemy. Let us pray in this Eucharist that the Lord may fill us with the courage and hope, especially during this pandemic, so that we might stand strong and face the challenges of this present time. In order to celebrate the Eucharist in a worthy manner, let us acknowledge our sins and failures and ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christ, 
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, grant that we may always confirm our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 and verses 4 to 6. The Persian king Cyrus, who does not even know the God of Israel, is chosen to end the Babylonian exile. God tells Cyrus that besides him, there is no other God. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to lose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me there is no God. I equip you though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response shall be, give the Lord glory and power. Give, give the, the Lord glory and power. Or sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Our response? Give the Lord glory and power. For the Lord is great and highly to be praised, to be feared above all gods. For the gods of the nations are not. It was the Lord who made the heavens. Our response? Give, Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord your families of peoples. Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. 
Our response? Give, Give the, the Lord glory and power. Worship the Lord in holy splendor, or tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Our response? Give, Give the, the Lord glory and power. The second reading. The first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. This letter, written from Corinth, is the first of Paul's letters. Indeed, the earliest complete writing in the New Testament. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before God the F and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Kindly rise for the acclamation. as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his words. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, we all make different plans, beautiful plans for our life and for our future. But sometimes, when our plans, when our dreams comes crushing down, we become disheartened, we become devastated. The first reading of today 
would say that when our plans are in accordance with the plan of God, all the obstacles, all the difficulties, no matter what they are, will be used by God as instruments for us to achieve and reach that goal in our life. In the first reading, we hear about this king Cyrus. Cyrus was a pagan. And after he became king, the first thing he did was he liberated all the Jews who were in exile and he allowed them to go back to their homeland. It was in fact the dream and the desire of those Jews who were in exile waiting for the liberation. And God had that same plan. And God made use of this Cyrus, who was an ungodly person, as an instrument to give liberation to the Jews. So, to say, when my plans are in accordance with the plan of God, God will set everything right for us. So what do I need to do in my life? First of all, I and you have to acknowledge the plan of God for each one of us. And secondly, join hands with the plan of God to make it a reality. And the best way of making God's plan or God's dream for us a reality is by surrendering ourselves to the Lord. Surrendering ourselves completely into the hands of God. In the gospel, we see Jesus says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. The question here was about taxes. The Jews were forced to pay the taxes to the Roman emperor and they were not happy about it. And as they were not happy about it, they tried to trap Jesus with this question. Should we pay taxes or not? And Jesus is reminding them of their obligation. He's reminding them of a higher obligation, in fact, here. He tells them, give to God what belongs to God. Now, the question to be asked is, what is that in me that belongs to God? What is that in me that I have to give it to God? And this particular question can be answered with a short story. This story is about the Chinese missionary named Washerman Ni. It is said Washerman Ni was traveling from one place to another by train and the train was very slow. So Washerman Ni decided to read the Bible. Now there were three young men in the same compartment with Washerman Ni. And young men, these young men were so bored that they decided to play cards. Now the game which they know wanted another fourth person to join in. So what they did was, they went and asked Washerman Ni, you see, we want to pass time and we love to play cards, but we need one more person in. Would you like to join? I said, Washerman, say, Washerman Ni said, I would love to join. I would love to join and play, but there's a problem. And the problem is, I have no hands. In fact, he was showing his hands and telling them, I have no hands. Now they were wondering whether Washerman Ni was joking. So then, again, Washerman Ni said, it seems, oh, this one, these are not my hands. They belong to my master. And if I have to use these hands, I need to get the permission from my master. Now, he said, these are the hands which were consecrated and offered to my master. And so much so, if I have to use it, I need to get the permission. The young man asked him, who is this master? And he told them, 
Oh, I forgot to inform you about my master. My master is Jesus. And how can I repay for his great love for me? So what I did was I have offered my complete self to that master. So no matter what it is, whatever I do, I need to get a permission from him. Now he said, can I ask permission from my master? Will you give me some time? I'll get the permission and then come and play with you. The young man told him, better no. We want to know more about your master. And the whole journey, the night, they traveled talking about Jesus and Washamani explained them the scriptures. And it is said, as they reached in the morning, they got down from the train, went to the nearby church and got baptized. My dear friends, we began with that question. What is that in me that belongs to God? The answer is very simple. Everything. I completely belong to God. I and you are consecrated and we belong to God. And we need to surrender our complete selves to him. And Jesus says, give to God what belongs to God. If God's plan in my life has to become a reality, if God's dream for me has to become a reality, I and you have to simply surrender our very selves to him. And when we surrender our complete selves, I tell you, we can work miracles and we ourselves can become miracles. As we see today in the second reading, St. Paul would actually thank the Thessalonian community and he tells them, I am thankful to you because you have completely given yourself to God and his service. And he says, because of this one, God will bless you abundantly. And then he goes on to say, he says, let us place before the Lord all our needs, all that we want, because adhering to the plan of God is not that easy, as I say. We can talk about it, but to practice it in our everyday life, it's a very difficult thing. And that's why St. Paul says, let us ask God for his strength so that we would be able to fulfill the plan of God in our lives. My dear friends, let this Eucharist be a time for each one of us to recognize and acknowledge that we belong to God. And let us offer our complete selves today to the Lord, asking Him that He may make use of us as an instrument to spread His love and mercy to others. Let this be our prayer in today's Eucharist. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, second book of Kings, chapter 20, verse 5. The Lord says, I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. And now I come and I heal you. Our God knows what we are going through right now. So let us now, trusting in his boundless mercy, let us surrender all our prayers and petitions before him. Your response, Lord, show your kindness to us. Lord, show your, your kindness, kindness to us. us. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that as people chosen by God, they may guide the faithful with love and compassion, we pray. Lord, show your kindness to us. For leaders who are responsible for the governance of their countries, that they may work for the welfare of the people under their care, so that mass migration that often end in tragedy may be avoided, we pray. Lord, show your kindness to us. For our own country, which is home to people belonging to so many religions and traditions, that peaceful coexistence may prevail in our country through the loving mercy of God, we pray. Lord, show your kindness to us. That Christians may bring a fine balance into their lives by professing loyalty to their country, but at the same time, getting firmly rooted in the rich spiritual heritage of the Judeo-Christian religion to which they belong. We pray. Lord, show your kindness to us. For all of us present in the Eucharistic Assembly, that enlightened by the word of God, we may stand by our convictions so that we may offer to God the best in ourselves. We pray. Lord, show your kindness to us. Let us silently pause and present our personal petitions to the Lord. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before you with our dreams and desires, with our pains and miseries, with our brokenness, and we surrender them to you, O Lord. And we ask you to bless each one of us gathered here. May your peace, love, and joy always remain in us and in our families. And may we become your chosen instruments in our family and in the society. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted by the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as a church. And so in company with the chorus of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. 
remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ Through him and with him and in him O God almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace my friends behold the lamp of god behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamp lord, lord i am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. never permit me to be separated from you amen
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to to Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. Remember, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, the great things the Lord has done for you. He chose you for his mother. He wanted you close to his cross. He gives you a share in his glory. He listens to your prayer. Offer him our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Present, Present our petitions to him. Altogether, let us live like you in the love of your Son, so that his kingdom may come. Lead us to the source of living water that flows from his heart, spreading over the world, hope and salvation, justice and peace. See our trust in you. Answer our prayer. Show yourself always our mother. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.